turn to the crisis in Gaza. Earlier this week, everyone placed their hope in the announcement of a 72-hour ceasefire. Good news? The ceasefire held. Bad news? Then this happened. The three-day ceasefire between Israel and Hamas is history. The Israeli military says rockets were fired into Israel before the ceasefire even ended. Look, is it too much to ask that a ceasefire in Gaza lasts a little longer than fucking Bonnaroo? <laughs> As of taping right now, another ceasefire has apparently begun. We can, we can all only hope that it holds. The problem is that even when leaders over there start to sound hopeful, the things they're hopeful about are depressingly unambitious. There are opportunities now to be able to fashion a new reality, one more conducive to the end of violence, to the establishment of calm, sustainable peace, or at least a sustainable quiet. What? Did, did you see that? He wished for peace and then immediately bargained himself back to a sustainable quiet, which basically sounds like a librarian walking around the region shushing everyone. <laughs> no rockets! <laughs> And if that weren't enough to dispel any illusions of imminent peace in the region, there was also this. A new app, it's called Bomb Gaza. It allows users to kill civilians from the skies on your phone. It's a game. That, that's what I always thought the problem with Gaza was. No one had turned it into a game yet. It, <laughs> it just wasn't fun until now. Incredibly, there are games out there representing both sides of this conflict. On Rocket Pride, you can fire rockets at Israel, and on Gaza Assault Code Red, you can pilot a drone and fire on Palestinian towns. Just, just think about that. Someone could have been playing these games on their commute to work while real rockets were being fired, going, oh shit, I missed my stop. This is the worst thing that's happened to anyone today. <laughs> To be honest, war has always been popular in video games. The, the nuances of diplomacy, however, they've never held quite the same appeal. That is until now. You fought terrorists in Call of Duty and alien hordes in Gears of War. Well, now get ready for the opposite of that. Okay, first up on the agenda, paragraph three, subsection four, retention of previously agreed upon language. World of Peacecraft. Critics are already calling it uncomfortably boring and off-puttingly complicated. World of Peacecraft features all the heart-pounding excitement of trilateral talks in a variety of international settings, from Russian conference rooms to Pakistani conference rooms to Israeli conference rooms and back to Russian conference rooms. Are you ready for non-stop sitting, incessant talking, and incremental progress? All while trying to escape the creeping sense that your presence may be doing more harm than good. Oh. IGN says, Jesus, this is bleak. And official Xbox magazine raves, I honestly would prefer war to this. Madeleine Albright says, yeah, that's pretty much what it's like. The fight for peace just got fightier.